Hello, and welcome to Reinventing Nerds. Today, we're going to have a repeat guest, the first time ever. We're welcoming back Vladimir Baranov to the show. He previously talked about startup stressors for CTOs, but today he's going to talk about the CTO and CEO relationship. Vladimir Baranov is the founding CTO of Advisor Engine, a fintech company that was recently acquired by Franklin Templeton. Vladimir has been building successful technology solutions, primarily focusing on the fintech industry for 15 years, but he also has a love of space. He is an advisor for Scout, a satellite development company. Vladimir has extensive experience managing the business and tech divide, and he also has some stories to share with us today. So let's start out welcoming Vladimir. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Johnny, and uh, thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. I'm so excited to have you back. Um, I really want to hear your stories about the CEO CTO relationship. And, you know, let's just dive right in. I mean, what are some of the common challenges that come up uh, between the two? I mean, you are a CTO and you have your own experiences, but you also give presentations on this topic. What are some of these general things that you talk about? Sure. Sure. It's a really great question, Johnny. There are Absolutely, a lot of challenges, but some of the things that I've seen in my experience and uh, experiences of other CTOs who shared with me is basically comes down to a relationship between two individuals, like where mm -hmm. are they coming from, what do they know, and how different of those realities are between those individuals. Typically, we see uh, either a business person playing the role of uh, the CEO and then a technical person uh, playing a role of CTO when the relationship starts. And what can happen in uh, those situations is that what if the individuals have never worked before or have never worked together at a startup, there could be friction in the, that collaboration just because they had never had a relationship before. And it's in popular slang, you hear people just went out, started a company, everything was great, uh, but the steps are missed of how the sausage is actually make, I made. In reality, what you see is you have two individuals coming to start a small company and they have various backgrounds and those various backgrounds have its own myths, uh, have its own legends and also a way of working. And when those two individuals come together, uh, it's sometimes hard to communicate the same idea uh, without having a common context. So some of the things that I generally recommend if there is a, a friction in a relationship is actually being as transparent and open with your partner as much as possible and to generate that common context in, in which both of you will be on the same page and understanding uh, what things um, uh, will perspire and where the business will lead. Uh, some of the more practical things and uh, to answer your question as far as challenges, mm -hmm. uh, generally scoping is a very tense exercise between uh, business and technical representatives uh, where a business uh, perceives uh, the uh, product from the user experience, let's say a button, a uh, search bar, um, a report. Um, and from user experience, it's very fast. Usually it's a split of a second, uh, easily configurable, and the result comes back. But from a technical perspective, uh, in a sense, you can have hundreds of servers, millions of lines of code in the background which have to present this ease of use experience. An example would be Google, right? Google from user experience, this is extremely easy. It's just a search bar. But it what's hidden from the user is the thousands and thousands upon servers that are processing all those reports. And understanding that is important for CEOs to have that understanding and also important for CTOs to present that to CEOs that this, the way the sausage is made is sometimes not in a way that it's uh, perceived from experience. Um, there are some business concepts that the CEO needs to explain to the CTO and one of them is over-engineering, right? And uh, it's very important for uh, the startups to release their products fast in order to have an iterative approach to market fit. And uh, there is a tendency for technology folks in general to over-engineer the products to make them as perfect as possible. Um, and uh, the goal of uh, the business person is to explain that it's okay to have a C plus product as long as we can test if there's any traction with the clients. So there'll be some of the top of the line uh, challenges that I've seen and heard and experienced myself. 
Okay. That sounds so interesting. I mean, you said so many things there that, that I want to pick up on. Uh, first of all, just sort of recap, you know, you're talking about uh, an example here of the uh, CEO not understanding the complexity or amount of work is a typical example that it takes the uh, designers, the developers to put in to make even something very seemingly simple happen, like just a button. Um, and yet also the CTO sometimes have trouble holding back on perfecting uh, the design and the CEO saying, no, 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 it just has to be good enough to suit the needs or at least see if we have any interest. And so, so the two perspectives there uh, can have some friction. Um, but you also said a couple of words that I wanted to ask you about more, which was like the myths and legends. I mean, this is like really interesting here. So what's what's coming up here when you're talking about people have these myths and legends? Are they having um, ideas about each other, you know, like, oh, the CTO is going to be blah, 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 because that's the myth of CTOs or vice versa, or is it about, yeah, what is it about? Sure, it's a great question again. Um, it's more of an ignorance of the context and experience of the other vertical. Um, okay. Usually business individuals can come through various ways, but they usually come either from sales position, from product positions, uh, from marketing positions. While technology is usually a person that comes from a de software developer, maybe a system administrator. Um, and those career paths have very different experiences. But sometimes they get glints of information of how CEOs are from either reading newspapers or reading online or getting uh, things from the books. Um, and certain things could be perceived in a way that, let's say, marketing is a very sophisticated uh, area of startups where you have to understand what your market is and how your product fits within it. But for a technology person, it could be perceived, well, the code is the most important thing. That's what drives the thing. And if the product is perfect, it will be bought. Um, and it thus deprioritizes in mind of CTO, the seasonal of the product over the actual stake, over the substance of the product and perceives the marketing, let's say, to be uh, more of like, let's print some brochures and things will work out kind of perspective. So that's where the myth of specific area of business would be for CTO. For CEO, could be a myth and going back to the ease of implementation, it could be that the user experience is the same thing as building the product, right? If let's say okay. the business un person understands, the CEO understands how the product works on the surface as a user, there could be a myth that it's the same ease of implementation that it is from mm -hmm. technology perspective. Um, another myth, that a, myth uh, that a business person might have is um, understanding that, uh, no, no, sorry, being ignorant of the sophistication of software in general where a lot of answers cannot be had right away and that comes from a nature of software building where sometimes you don't know what will be at the end once you build it uh, because of uh, complexities of the decisions which i made along the way um, but also at, at the same time not knowing what will derail your mvp uh, a minimum viable product uh, the complexities of, of software sometimes dictate uh, our path not to be as straightforward um, as possible. Um, and uh, that uh, sometimes is, is not clear uh, to the CEO um, and that has to be explained, but also the myth um, of that it's predictable that what we're building will be there on time. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, because every time we're building software, even if we're putting existing parts together, we're still building a new thing in the context of a business problem. Sometimes we don't know how long it's going to take because we're building a new solution for a given problem. And sometimes CEOs may have an analogy that uh, uh, they have a um, uh, 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 analogy of building a house because we know how to build the houses, right? And the house has a timeline, it has a, no number of rooms, no number of bathrooms, no number of kitchens, but it's not the same with the software. Interesting. So there has to be a bit of trust there. It sounds like that that you will actually get to the endpoint or get to a good endpoint, and you will do it in a timely manner, even though you don't know exactly what you're doing. It's sort of exploratory at the same time. Absolutely. 
Yeah. Absolutely. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. So yeah, it sounds like a little bit of trust on both sides of this that, you know, understanding that, you know, the perfection doesn't have to be there or understanding that uh, it may take a little while to, to figure out depending on what changes along the way. Um, you know, I'm, I'm curious as a CTO, what have you had to learn or change to improve your relationships with CEOs? And I'm also wondering, I know that you have an MBA and I'm wondering if that's helped you work better with CEOs. Sure. Great, great question. Um, uh, I am a consummate reader and also a complete believer in uh, self-improvement in the there is so much material out there which allows us to become a better person, a better person in the role that we're serving our organizations of the society. Um, and some of the things that I learned along my journey is, and then this is in the priority order, um, understanding where the other person is coming from and understanding their biases and context is probably the most important thing that you ever have to learn. Um, there's obviously the common phrase of learn how to walk in somebody else's shoes. It's kind of there, it's truthful. It is something similar that I'm trying to say, but un, it, it's so important to realize what experiences the other person went through when they have come up with a certain model of reality or have come up with uh, their thought patterns or have come up with an idea or a thought they just shared with you because our natural tendency and and mine and everybody's uh, to start analyzing anything that is said to us within our own context and sometimes it is faulty if we're not uh, taking the context of the person who's telling us that into consideration um, focusing on that area helped me adjust my approaches and uh, really improve a relationship and partnerships with others and the business and um, technology. Um, another thing which uh, I realized is that while I do have myself this kind of awareness, I do also have to realize that the other person might not have the awareness or practice of putting themselves in my own context to understand uh, anything that I'm communicating. So that meant that I had to learn ways of communicating things from my knowledge vertical uh, into that person's um, uh, knowledge base using analogies or common ideas and models that we already share um, as part of the pre uh, pre immediate uh, relationship of history that we had. Um, and once that was done, it, the relationship became uh, much easier. Um, and number three, it's also important to announce and uh, and be very transparent with the person who you're talking to is that, hey, listen, we're going to have friction and difficulties. And we need to both accept that whatever the friction comes up, it doesn't come up from the place of uh, me trying to hurt you or me trying to make you sound wrong. It's perhaps that we're just coming in that specific moment from such various contexts and that that conflict could be easily resolved by us sitting down and explaining um, more de in more detail where, we're, where is our thought coming from. Um, and last one, uh, overall what this does uh, in the end is uh, creates a trust between two individuals uh, and thus I had to work a lot on myself to have those fillers, like those emotional um, IQ fillers to understand, is this person trusting me now? Or can I come up with proxies, I discuss proxies with this person where they can themselves look at those heuristics and understand that, okay, I can trust this person because of this things that were promised got delivered. Um, and uh, that's, that's the first part of the question. And the second answer to the second part of the question, did my MBA help uh, me on this journey? And the answer, is, of course, is yes. Um, it's interestingly helped me more on the engineering side than on the business side, because on the business side, it's more like once you talk this talk and you use the needed jargon and you demonstrate that you're knowledgeable about certain 
and subject, it just is accepted, right? That it's, it was more of a benefit for me to understand what is happening in the business uh, and perhaps also help me somewhat in communication. But uh, probably 80% of the benefit came when I had to explain the business rationale to my reports, to my uh, partners on the technology side, who perhaps did not have the business background, uh, but myself, because I had both business and technical education, I was able to weave those together in a way that were exp- planetary to the people at folks in the, uh, in the tech vertical. Well, that's just really interesting. Um, first of all, I have to say, wow, that's very enlightened too, to, to be so aware of all these things that you have to do on the people side. I don't often hear that. Um, and, um, you know, once you get to the level of CTO, it sounds like it's, you're saying that's like the most important. So you have to really, uh, find a way to do that constant development. But, uh, a couple of things that you said, um, that really attracted my attention here were, um, if I may sort of summarize, is that you took responsibility for the relationship and the communication, and you took aware, uh, responsibility for being aware yourself and trying to understand the other person, but also in helping them understand you by communicating better. Instead of saying, well, they didn't bother trying to understand me better or they didn't get it, you're saying, no, I'm trying to help them do that. And so if both people are doing that, it seems like there'll be a lot more uh, trust going on there. Um, but even if the other person isn't, um, I, I think that's really key that, that people don't always take that responsibility for doing that. So um, that, that's a really uh, important point. Um, I also like that you said that the MBA, the business side helped you with the tech more than the relationship. And the relationship is more about the person, not about whether you understand business or or technology as much as about the individual person. But um, I think that's also a key point for the developers that understanding the business can really help you uh, develop better products as well. So yeah, thanks. Thanks for answering that part too. Well, sure. I'm wondering, you know, we're talking about you taking responsibility for the relationship, but what about the CEOs? I mean, what have effective CEOs done to build a solid relationship with you as a CTO? I mean, to the extent that you, you know. Yes, uh, of course. And uh, it takes two to tango, right? Mm-hmm. So hopefully if uh, any CEOs mm-hmm. are listening to this uh, podcast, uh, hopefully these tips will help you make the relationships with uh, your CTOs and technical reps uh, easier. Um, I mean, it's no surprise, but I probably will say that everything I said about the would help me become a better CTO equally for most parts applies to the CEO. Um, the most thing, the, the main thing that you have to develop is a CEO's empathy and understanding how your technical person is generating their thoughts, right? Being open and transparent and helping them develop the language, which helps you understand what is happening in technology. And uh, to understand that perhaps yourself have biases or myths of how technology needs to operate that perhaps need to be broken down and explain where you're coming from. So that way that person understand the context so they are able to operate within that context or perhaps you can take on the leadership role from empathy perspective and uh, try to create frameworks, uh, language frameworks, communicational frameworks uh, with your partner uh, where you would be able to get that information from them, perhaps from proxies you yourself will create uh, if you don't see that there's a lot of traction uh, you can get by changing the other person. Um, You can start Uh, by also talking about things like CTO's needs and what does the person really need to be successful and what kind of approaches, uh, schedules, uh, or scoping exercises are necessary for that person to be successful in your relationship. Um, And that usually comes from experience where CEOs kind of put on um, uh, more of a directional and executive hat where this will be that, this product will be that, this uh, solution will be that, um, without perhaps having a more extensive uh, conversation with a technology person of what will it take to get there um, or like what resources we'll need. 
Um, another frequent mistake that I noticed that a lot of CEOs do is they sell things before consulting their CTOs. Yeah. Now, now it's not necessarily down from a bad place because you're you're a CEO and you're driving the business and you're creating the business and you're making the sale and that's very exciting. But in the end, when it comes to execution, perhaps as part of the sale, a few things were mentioned, which would take a much longer time to implement or uh, it's just will will take a lot of stress on, on your technology organization, which might generate a certain level of turnover. Um, and you have to watch out for that. A good uh, advice there is just to see if you can roll the pitch before the CTO and see if they can spot anything that we, you might not have anything available uh, or perhaps just have a Slack in your development uh, resources available just in case if that oversale happens. Um, and again, similar type of exercise that I gave for myself, I would give uh, to the CEO partners is that be transparent and be open and talk to the, your CTOs that you would like to find a way to collaborate better. And not every tech is very empathetically oriented and able to understand what really you're coming from. So perhaps maybe recommending additional training for your CTOs on soft skills um, or understanding business needs will go a long way uh, to building that relationship. Uh, but in the end, it's, it's all about trust, right? I mean, what, what are the heuristics that you believe will create trust for you and what are the heuristics that um, CTO believes that will create trust for you? Be that if you're promising, let's say, not to oversell um, in sales meetings and you go through with that, it goes a long way. Even if just it's a continuous commitment to uh, uh, certain points that you've promised uh, within the partnership. Um, so I would say those, those would be a few things that I recommend. Wow, excellent. Yeah, I love uh, that a lot of it comes down to good communication and, and the communication is also listening. I think what you're saying a lot and, and asking, what are your needs and asking, Hey, is this product that I'm trying to sell going to work, you know, for you, how, how are you going to be able to, to meet the needs of this product or do we need to shift it? Uh, so it's, it sounds like uh, uh, not just telling, but asking, and you said something else too, which is so interesting that, uh, helping to get some training on soft skills for the technical side and, and maybe on and at all sides if needed, but uh, seeing the importance of that investment uh, because, you know, even a small amount can go a long way in terms of resolving this conflict or, or getting the scope correct at the beginning. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, excellent. So I'm wondering if you have any sort of uh, summary advice for CTOs, uh, if they want to improve their relationship with their CEO? Uh, I would say prim primary advice is I'd learn how to build trust. If your partner CEO is frustrated, it's not necessarily because they do not value your work. They might not value the work in the way they perceive the reality. So perhaps you just need to readjust things that you're being valued on and understand where the CEO is coming from. Wow, that's deep. Yeah, that's excellent. I mean, that really makes a lot of sense. It's it's not necessarily it's not you, right? It's it's the reality that they're experiencing and helping to see through that and and understand it. Hmm. Okay. Well, if people want to reach out to you, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about how they can reach you? Sure, Johnny. Um, for any CEOs or CTOs who are looking forward uh, to bettering their relationships. Uh, feel free to either find myself on LinkedIn, uh, Vladimir Baranov there, uh, or email me directly at uh, vladimir.baranov at gmail.com. Excellent. And I just want to put a little pitch in for you. You're a very humble person here, but you also do coaching on that, right? And and some workshops. And we've actually collaborated on some of this so that... Right. Yes. So that's, that's, that's a mm -hmm. good uh, time to mention that uh, we mm -hmm. do have a <laughs> full disclosure, uh, we do have a website where if you would like to jump on on the road to better your relationships, a good place to go to is ceo-and-cto.com. And it's a website that we've set up for both business leaders and technical leaders. Um, there are a few blog posts uh, to get you started. And uh, when you're ready, just reach out to us. Um, 
there's a link at the bottom there or uh, sign up with your email and we'll reach out to you as soon as we're ready and you are. Excellent. Well, I think you've given people a lot to contemplate uh, and to think about to how to move forward on this. So thank you so much, Vladimir. Thanks oh, for, absolutely, Johnny. Yeah. And it thanks was for, a great pleasure. Yeah, I, I just really appreciate you being a guest for a second time on our show to share your wisdom with the listeners. So thanks for being a guest on Reinventing Nerds. No, absolutely. No problem. And thanks to all our listeners and viewers. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. And we will see you next time.